beaches like in a picture book. Enjoy of life for old and young. Here you can find palm wine in abundance. And the most valuable coconut in the world. Life can be a paradise in Seychelles. As beautiful as in a travel brochure, lonely bays with untouched beaches. And granite rocks as if sculptured by an artist's hand. Sculptural remnants of the primeval continent Gondwana, which once broke apart at this point. Today, for many, Seychelles are the dream destination in the Indian Ocean. La Digue is the fourth largest island of the archipelago. Here, people live scattered in mountains and bays, and the passage of time seems to play no role. The grindstone is already quite worn. So Ni Jacques uses it every day. With a plastic bottle and a freshly sharpened knife, he makes his way to his coconut tree every morning, like many men on La Digue. This knife is used for nothing else. Nothing else is cut with it. No onions, no potatoes. It's only for the color. If you take a different knife, you won't get our palm wine. Sony has permanently installed the ladder on the tree. Twice a day, he has to climb into the crown six meters high. He has tied the palm tree's inflorescences into tight bundles. And the precious sap drips from them very slowly, but unceasingly. I always have to cover that a bit so that not too many insects crawl into the bottle. Every morning and every evening, Sony is on top of the palm tree and fills the fermenting flower juice, the kalu, into his storage container. Even pure from the palm, the juice has a slightly intoxicating effect. I learned the Kalu tapping when I was a little boy. I've been doing it ever since. Our parents always said, there's a lot of energy in the Kalu. The juice gives us strength. And that's why we like to drink it so much, on all occasions. Now I'll cut it again. The fresh cut makes the flower sap flow better. Three buds dangle in the tree. And the Kalu drips in there the specialty of Ladik. It is almost like in the land of milk and honey, only that instead of milk and honey, palm wine flows incessantly. A good tree yields six to seven liters per day, a really nice yield. So Ni could never drink that much alone. Most of the nearly 100,000 inhabitants of Seychelles live on the largest island, Mahi. Geographically, the state belongs to East Africa. The main islands are located more than 1,000 kilometers off the mainland. There is a variety of religions and ethnicities, but no indigenous people. This is because Seychelles were discovered and settled only with the advent of global merchant shipping. First, the French ruled here, later the British. The remote island kingdom has been independent since 1976. In the middle of the lively island capital of Victoria stands a clock tower like in London, a mini Big Ben, a relic from colonial times. In the harbour of Victoria, the capital of Mahé, there is once again a lot going on. 
From here, ancient wooden schooners supply the small islands. In the middle of all this is a modern freighter, the Espoir, Hope. Three times a week, she loads 200 tons for Pralin, the second largest Seychelles island. The Espoir is the only cargo connection there. And the only one keeping track in all the confusion is Hilary Germain, the cargo dispatcher. That goes into number six. Done? Hillary enjoys the cargo and has a lot on her mind. I do the loading, I sign the papers to load the cargo that properly. Yeah, household foods, vegetables and all. Mixed, mixed type of cargoes. Yes, I need to write it down. If the customer pays, we put the ticket pays, paid and all. That's it, we just wrote down everything. We signed the papers of the goods received. You can put your package in the back where the paint buckets are. Can you still get that over today? Take that away and put it down there, please. Do you have anything else for the espoir? See you Wednesday then. Are you from the courier service? Yes, courier. In her open air office, Hillary has to keep a cool head. The espoir has to be processed by noon, a tight schedule. That's why Captain Daniel Rose is always at the loading crane himself. Now it's a bit risky and tricky. You must be how to balance. Sometimes the heavy stuff, you must have it early morning. But nowadays, you can have the heavy stuff in the afternoon. You have to tell the client to return it back because you don't have the facility of the cargo terminal. The ship is a self-construction. Daniel's father spent 15 years building it. I born for it, no? Because uh, I, I grew up in my uh, father's uh, path. All the way I've been in, into this business and I grew up like this. I, uh, all my life I was grew up with this guy. That's why I keep on going for the same job, just changing the generation of the world. Hey, sweetie, nice and easy with that. These ones, the smaller ones, we put it inside, or the fragile one and the smaller ones, we put it directly on the boot in the office. <laughs> Hillary used to work in sales for an insurance company, but the post out here in the port is made for her multi-talent. She has to deal with everyone and everything, with packages and packers, and even with some tough blokes. With Hillary, they all become quite tame. I just bring some eggplant. I have to bring it to the island. In French, they call aubergine. You can fry it, you can make salad. Lot of things you can make with this. Can I put these down here? Sure, we'll put those in the hold at the very end. They do respect me because I'm not here to play or to, you know, I'm serious. So it's not easy. <laughs> In two hours at the latest, the Espoir should leave for Pralin. On Pralin, the second largest Seychelles island, it is much quieter than on Mahi. And in a gorge in the middle of it exists a unique jungle. In the national park of Vallée de Mer grows a huge coconut the coco de mer. It can grow up to 25 kilos in weight and is considered the largest plant seed in the world. The sea coconut thrives exclusively here in the rainforest in Seychelles. Once a week, the park rangers take four to five nuts from the forest. 
under the strict supervision of security guards, because each individual nut is worth several hundred euros. The national park management regulates the supply, so prices remain high. Good for the virgin forest, because the proceeds from the coco de mer trade are partly ploughed back into nature conservation. Marc Jean-Baptiste leads the small jungle expedition. Unfortunately, this uh, is sold on the black market, and the, the Asian countries, they use the kernel. They say it contains aphrodisiac properties, so they made medicine out of it, unfortunately. I just think that is happening in Africa with the uh, rhino horns and etc. But it has not been scientifically, scientifically proven, though. Every coco de mer palm in the forest has a number so that its fruit can be directly assigned. And each nut gets a kind of passport, so it's not only traceable to the buyer. The important is that we need to follow a genetic, the genetic uh, trend of the nut. If, for instance, uh, the tree produces bigger nuts or smaller nuts, we definitely know which tree will produce bigger or smaller nuts. The enormous coconuts, which are encased in a thick shell of fiber, probably got their name from seafarers. They found them floating in the middle of the ocean and could not explain their origin. They believed that the nut grew in the water, hence the name coco de mer. Fruity. Mm. Pineapple. <laughs> to some here, the shape of the coco de mer reminds them of a female silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> Palm 23 has once again delivered the biggest nut. Nice butt. <laughs> Under strict supervision, workers haul five fruits from the forest. Every sixth coco de mer must remain in the park for offspring. Marc Jean Baptiste and his security guard Andy already have their eye on a particularly magnificent specimen. Oh, yeah. He's in the line to get you. The two hide the most valuable coconut in the world under palm leaves so that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands, but can deliver offspring completely undisturbed. Yeah, sometimes we do have poaching incidents in the park uh, whereby people do come and if they see this uh, exposed, they, they, they take it. So that's why we have to make sure that we secure proper and then cover and ensure that the nut germinates. And this is a nice one. A coco de mer palm can live more than 300 years, if you let them. Also reaching a biblical age is the Aldabra giant tortoise, which is found almost exclusively in Seychelles. These primeval heavyweights are also strictly protected. Some specimens live on the island of Ladigue. Where hidden in the trees, the flower juice of the coconut palm drips into suspended containers, day in and day out, for generations. Sonny Jacques brings home his palm wine harvest, the Kalou. A gift of nature, sweetish, fresh, with a slightly intoxicating effect. Sonny quickly filters out bugs, flies and wasps. Bottled, he now lets the Kalou mature for one or two days. Some of the sugar is broken down and the alcohol content increases. But Sony's palm wine never gets old, because he supplies his neighbors with it. 
That's how they've always done it on Nadig. In the past, there was no beer. People only drank kalu, even in the morning and at noon. There was no other alcohol. It was like paradise. <laughs> Sony's buddy has come by to get some kalu. But he doesn't want the sweet stuff. He says that he only likes the ripe stuff that's been sitting for four days. And his friend also wants to buy a bottle. Sony gives him two different ones. Sony's mate wants to know which one is stronger. He should take a seat. Sony will be with him right away. Sony normally takes 50 rupees for a litre of Kalu, which is about 3 euros 50. But today, it's on the house. Sony's buddy remembers that they used to get a little jar to cleanse the body, to cleanse the stomach. So two or three times a month, they were given kalu. They took it as medicine, but not too often. Worlds collide in Seychelles. The luxury of the rich and super rich and the simple life. Ricky Rass is a border crosser. By day, he skippers snow white charter yachts and by night, he sings in roaring discos as a well-known reggae and Sega singer with a revolution message. Today, he is chauffeuring a local birthday party. Four friends with their families from the island's upper class are celebrating their 16th birthday in a big way. In the middle of it all is the skipper, who's really sagging this morning. You really have to have good time management. You need to rest in between. Last night I had a show and this morning I'm a charter captain. That's OK, because here on board I'm recharging my batteries. Last night the 30 minutes on stage felt like eight hours of work. Still, I got up early to do this job. Ricky is a real star in Seychelles. Almost everyone here knows his hits. That's another reason why he was booked for today as a skipper by the parents of the girls. Here in Seychelles, you can be a professional singer but still have a job on the side. So it's not like overseas when you're a superstar. You have to get used to it. You really need a surplus of energy, but it's fun. Even the job change. You enjoy, enjoy doing it. Ricky Ras, the skipper, navigates the party boat all the way to the south of Mahi. In Police Bay, he drops anchor. But his guests have no view of the bay. No one jumps into the water. Everyone is only in the mood for partying. Much better than that. Uh, good music, good weather, good people, good food. Nice girl. <laughs> Ricky knows what's expected of him now. Party at 1 p.m. His own songs boom from the speakers, and Ricky the Skipper becomes Ricky the Rapper. <laughs> Yeah. 
In the port of Victoria, the final spurt begins. The remaining cargo has to be loaded into the belly of the Espoir under high pressure. Why aren't you there yet? Are you stuck in traffic? Hilary Germain is on the phone after some customers. The captain wants to close the hatches. A few more, not much. There's these ones, not much. And then we have three cars going as well. Yes, the car we loaded at the end. The hold is packed with vegetables, drinks, mattresses, machines and furniture. Only then do the plants float in. Hillary is the only woman in the men's world of the port. Everyone flirts with her all the time. But she doesn't let that drive her crazy. Oh, yes. <laughs> but that's it. They just joke around. We joke around and that's it. We do respect each other all the time. <laughs> the freight finale is made up of three small cars. And when they are firmly lashed down, it's time to cast off. Then Hillary is off duty and Captain Daniel Rose lets go for the four and a half hour crossing. His Espoir is the only regular freight connection between the two largest Seychelles islands, Mahé and Pralin. On the return trip, the ship is mostly empty, only sometimes loaded with garbage. The bay Entendance on the island of Mahé. Here in the 70s, the Beatles guitarist George Harrison and the actor Peter Sellers bought a huge piece of land where they lived for a while. Later, a Swiss nature photographer had this dreamy colonial style villa built on the site. You can rent it, the residence of the rocks, for several thousand dollars per night. Not far away, at Coco de Mer Cosmetics in Takamaka, it's also about luxury. The five giant nuts from the national park arrived at the small factory that morning. Foreman Christopher Bristol carefully separates them. Later, the hollowed halves are glued back together and sold as souvenirs. Christopher is only after the core. It's dangerous. Sometimes a splinter will fly in your face or even your eye. In the past, the nut shells were scraped out and used as vessels for rice and palm wine. The inside was considered worthless at that time. Hey, bring me a spoon, please. Mm. You can only eat the very soft stuff. It tastes like lukewarm rice, a bit bland. Nevertheless, nowadays the interior is the most precious thing about the Coco de Mer. It would taste better with a little rum. And Christopher is the only one who gets to do it. We need pieces as big as possible from which we make thin slices. Unfortunately, you can't do much with the small chunks. The bigger the pieces, the better. Sometimes the shell breaks when you're scooping it out, but very rarely, because it's super sturdy. See? Yeah. 
<laughs> From the inside of the nut, the islanders once carved buttons. The material was durable and beautiful to look at. But that's over because the white coconut kernel is suddenly set to have magical powers. The coco de mer has recently been regarded as an aphrodisiac. Wafer thin slices with eroticizing effect for nibbling or as tea. At least that's what the marketing says. At least that works. Hong Kong. Hong Kong That's for Hong Kong and Dubai. They pay top money for that. There are also other quality levels. The B-grade goods go to India. The business is regulated by the state. Through clever management and scarcity, the coco de mer has become a luxury item. Pass it over here, please. Here we have the absolute top quality, securely packaged in a box, large, snow white and beautiful. You just have to believe in it, says Christopher, and it will work. The beaches are probably the greatest treasure of Seychelles, and they are all public. No one is allowed to have a private beach. So even reggae star Ricky Ras can still do a little business down here in the bay. That's how it goes every day, before people come to the beach. Ricky has a state license for 15 sunbeds on the most beautiful beach in Beauvanon. Our government has decided this so that the beaches belong to everyone. I think that's good. Even if a new hotel or a five-star resort is built, there must always be public access to the beach. Everyone can go up there. That's a good position. You can talk to the three back there. Looks like customers. It'll certainly be a good day today. Let's hope for some guests. Ricky has another important appointment as a musician. Up in the village, his producer Rocky is waiting. He has set up a studio in his old children's room. Rocky! One in which island hits are created. That's a pretty big studio by our standards. Because a lot of artists from Reunion, Mauritius and Madagascar also come here. It's probably because we island musicians always have this desire to do something together. Ricky is currently working on a new song. Really something for the dance floor, he thought, with a lot of beat and explicit lyrics. All right. All right. All right. Baskile is the name of the work. Loosely translated, Shake your bacon. Rocky and Ricky think that Basquile has hit potential. Once I have the headphones on and the beat starts, I bathe in the song. Then the good vibes come. And then it goes through the roof. A music start, vocal, sentiment. Sometimes it gets uncomfortable, even in Seychelles. 
When the southeast monsoon blows, for example, the weather can be bad for weeks. And some dream beaches rather turn into nightmare beaches. The stuff that's on the beach here is pretty filthy. Let's collect seaweed right out of the water instead. Look at that. Stinking seaweed, everything full of sand fleas. It smells of decay and manure. But it's precisely this green stuff that Benjamin Port Louis and his father Bernard are after. We need such seaweed. That's where the nutrients are. When we process it, we get them out of there. Here, for example, we also have seaweed and there's not much in it. For the two, the junk is pure gold. They want to take as much as their little boat can carry and make liquid fertilizer out of it. Even our grandparents collected seaweed, removed the salt from it and then composted it and used it as fertilizer. But then it takes three months for the nutrients to migrate into the soil. We have found a way to extract the nutrients contained. Then they act much faster and that makes all the difference. They collect the kelp by hand to leave as little damage as possible ecologically. With the dredger, they would remove too many crabs, shells and other creatures from the beach. And manual labor is cheaper too. The heat of the day subsides somewhat. Swimming is not only possible by the sea. The mountains are also a great place to spend some time. Ricky Rass grew up in the Les Mamel settlement. Out here, he finds inspiration for his lyrics. That's exactly how I grew up. We used to jump in here on the way home from school, and then we'd come home soaking wet and we'd get spanked. We were supposed to come home dry, but still we always wanted to jump in here. Then you were put outside in the sun to dry. And when you were dry, only then you were allowed inside the house. Otherwise, there was again beating. <laughs> His song lyrics are also about that. He always has his little notebook with him. We children of the river have loud voices because we have to sing against the noises, these verses say. I also try it with revolutionary lyrics. I don't perform with bling bling, I don't sing about money. I always want to get a message across, joy of life. I don't have a big golden watch like other rappers. That's not for me. There's no morality with Rolls Royce, Mercedes and the other fat cars. Many rap songs are just trimmed for effect, but have no message. The little ones are his fans already. Are you guys doing your schoolwork properly? Yes, and you had a pen in your hand just now.
On Pralin, right on the shore, Benjamin Paul-Louis and his father Bernard have built their seaweed fertilizer factory. The fresh seaweed must be washed first. Sand and salt interfere with further processing. It all started seven years ago. Benjamin was still a biochemistry student in Australia at the time. I came home during the summer vacations. We were on the beach and I saw these masses of seaweed. And then I said as a joke, you have to make something out of it because we have an abundance of it here. The dripping wet seaweed must first dry so that it doesn't rot further, but can be stored later. There are times in the high season when we have no more space to spread it all out. The sun is the best way if you want to work ecologically. The sun preserves the nutrients. They have built their hall extra large because expansion is firmly planned. Father and son are 100% convinced of the success of their invention. One ton of fresh kelp becomes 80 kilos of dry kelp. What you see here is the yield of at least 150 tons of wet kelp. The heart of their plant are the two pressure vessels. Inside, it's now down to the nitty gritty. With steam and high pressure and a multi-stage extraction process, the adventurous apparatus transforms the seaweed into a liquid plant fertilizer that packs a punch. It smells like rotten vegetables, really hard to describe, not a nice smell. Just like on the beach when the seaweed really rots. They say that medicine that's supposed to help must also be bitter. The more it stinks, the better for the plants, and the smell even deters insects. So far, the main customers for their seaweed extract are farmers and gardeners on Pralin. But the two already have inquiries from the main island of Mahé. From there, the Espoir is already a good four hours underway across the Indian Ocean. And on the horizon, her destination comes into view, Prana. The team still has some time to rest. They enjoy a homemade curry. The new Espoir is the pride and joy of the Rose family. The previous ship sank a few years ago. My dad uh, was not on the boat. This was a captain, another guy, a local guy. I think we've, about the experience of my dad, what has been happening is about the cargo, the loading, how they load the boat. That's why they, they capsize. Because in the time when we're running to the ocean, you cannot even start a crane, something to remove one ton to, brew, to move other side. Daniel has hired a new helmsman. He still needs some tips for the area. After you will understand what is the current. Yeah. yeah. After you, when everything is, you understand how to, and, and then of course you already have, yeah. Yeah. This time is. Yeah. <laughs> After almost five hours of crossing, the fairway of Pralin is ahead. Daniel masters the mooring maneuver in the narrow harbor basin as if in his sleep. Now we can tell it's like a toy because it's an everyday job, you see. The first time was a challenge, but now it's okay. Eventually, if maybe you can have a failure, yeah, this will be a tricky time, but if everything is okay, it's easy.
Not much is spoken on board now. Everyone wants to get off work quickly, and everyone knows what has to be done. Parcels and packages first, then the beverage containers, three used cars, and an old truck cab. The rest of the load is off the boat in under an hour. High time for the celebration evening, because every day shortly after six, the sun sets here. Say shells lie just south of the equator. In Takamaka on Mahi, in front of the nightclub Catiolo, there's a huge crowd today, because Ricky Rass is announced as the top act at midnight. Ricky is already there, at a table in the back, with some buddies. Tonight I sing reggae and dancehall music. No matter if it's Creole, another dialect, no matter what language. It's always about peace, love and justice. Love for the whole world. One love for this one. And then it starts. His new song, Basquele, seems to hit the nerve of the island youth. Ricky Rass, skipper and rapper, has landed a new hit. Everyone is already singing and swinging along. The message of Basquele is clear. Shake what you have. The song is a direct hit into the island feeling. Because here in Seychelles, nothing beats the joy of life. 